Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> Took half my speech out. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is Habit. Now, one of my uh, mentors is here in the audience, and um, she's uh, Justice Hearn from the South Carolina Supreme Court. And some of you know that I'm an attorney, so I have to ask her if it pleases the court. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> uh, there's a picture in your photograph, in my photograph here. <laughs> and about five months before this picture was taken, my hair was about this long. So uh, I let my hair grow. Uh, this is not the photograph for 1982, which is the reason the, that I'm here for the um, Hall of Fame. Uh, it was a little bit more dignified. I looked looked the part of uh, somebody who was serious about what they were doing, but I'm going to have to come back to that picture in a little while. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hickman, I talked to him when Rusty Thonard, he was our sweeper uh, the year that I played. The uh, sweeper, it, you know, you probably know about soccer, but I'll just tell you anyways. There's a goalie, he's the guy in the back, and I'm the only one that can use my hands. And the sweeper is the fellow that's in front of me, and he wipes everybody else out. Well, that's Rusty Thinert, and he was inducted a couple years ago. So we, our team was made up of 18 young men, and we ended up to be 9-9-4 nine, nine and four that season. So we had a 500 team, and Rusty and I were All-Americans that year. And I'm skipping around on my speech, but if it wasn't for Andy Solomon, uh, Andy was the sports information director here at, back then, now he's at the Citadel, been there for 25 years, I think. If it wasn't for all the work that Andy Solomon had put into us, meaning the athletes at Winthrop, then we wouldn't have been known, nobody would have heard of Winthrop soccer players. And I appreciate Andy all that you did for us, and it's made a big. It's made a. I, there he is. Stand up, Andy. <laughs> Thank you. It's made a bit, big difference in my life, and I know in a lot of the other uh, athletes' lives as well. So thank you. Uh, I would also like to thank Mr. Hickman for all the work that he's done. I know you all know that when. The basketball team is in the NCAA's, or the soccer team goes to the uh, to the cup, or you see something Winthrop. We're getting published. We're getting people that know that we're out there. You know that we're all proud to be related to Winthrop, and Mr. Hickman has done so much with the facilities here. I know when Dr. Giorgio was here at the school. He also did a lot to promote. I wish I went to a school that, this, that was this nice, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. And also, uh, Sharon Dubard, uh, she's been a rock star. Uh, she's really helped get through this a number of times. She's also helps raise money. Uh, we started a, a um, scholarship for Coast Cassida that I'm doing with one of the other older alums and we're raising money, so if you get a call from me, please be nice. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So, uh, finally, Rich Pasapanko has done a lot with this program since he took it over. And one of the things that he's done mostly is to bring us all back into the fold. Uh, we haven't um, played here in 32 years, and I feel as though I'm a part of the Winthrop program as I did back when I played as I did back when I was here in school. And I really appreciate everything that Rich has done for us. So thank you, Rich. <laughs> Don't worry, the check's coming. <laughs> OK. Now, um, as Coach told on me, I went to a military school up in Pennsylvania where there were no um, ladies. And I came here. As you all know, it went co-ed in 75, I visited in 78, so there really wasn't a choice as to what school I was going to go to. 
because the weather was nice and all the fellas that met me and talked to me and spent time with me, uh, Wes Jenkins is here, he came right up to me and introduced himself, said welcome, and you know, I felt as though I was one of the crowd from the very beginning. And then uh, we have, uh, that was in 78, so three years after, Coach Cassidy, the last night we went to dinner, he admitted that the eight to one guy to girl ratio was one of his best recruiting tools. <laughs> and I have to agree. Unfortunately, it didn't help our academics. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I was here for a year in 79, and um, there was an obstacle for me. Uh, there was a fellow that, uh, he came from Hialeah, Florida. He, he had played the year before. He didn't make any mistakes. He worked really hard. He was confident, fearless. He's everything you want. The goalies are kind of like fighter pilots. Just, you, they have all the confidence in the world. And this guy not only had that, but he was relaxed and he knew what he was doing. And I didn't play one varsity game. But if you look at this picture, okay, this is a picture of a guy who played on the junior varsity in 1979. And I bet you I am the first Beagle, B team, Eagle, Beagle, that has gotten into the Hall of Fame. So let's, how about that? <laughs> And, all right. So I left here uh, because the, the fellow that was playing ahead of me, he had in the records, he's number one on the lowest goals against average. He's number one in saves, number one in saves per game. He has the top three seasons of wins for a goalkeeper. He's the top minutes played. He has the most shutouts in three seasons, and he's also listed on another, uh, the percentage save, but there's an answer for that. In other words, more shots taken, saves made. Um, this guy that was in my way, he was also named the NAIA, he was also named the NAIA Player of the Year for District 6. So, do you guys blame me? I had to go. So, I, <laughs> all right. So, I left, I went back to Pennsylvania, and his coach said I had to grow up, and I did. And um, Frankie Griffin, he's here, and he came up from Florida. He's a great fellow, a great salesperson, too. He kept in touch with me. And uh, Frankie says, you know, Bob, you really need to come back and talk to Coach. Um, Frank, you th really think Coach wants to come back? You need to come back and talk to him. So I came back, and I went into Coach's office with my hat in hand, and I talked to him about why I wanted to come back to Winthrop. And Coach's words, and we talked about it last night, and I remember it. He says, Bob, two years ago, you were not very nice to me. And, <laughs> right? and as I say, fighter pilots, they always think that they should be the ones to be playing, to do whatever. And I thought it was that guy. I thought that Bob Bowen should be on the bench, but he was a district player of the year, but that's besides the point. But Coach looked at me, and he, taught me one of the best lessons that you can, that I ever learned, is you can walk on, I will give you a second chance. And in my line of business, people need second chances. You need to give them the opportunity to prove themselves. And that's what Coach did. So no scholarship, but you can come back and we'll figure something out. If you make the team, you make the team. I came back and they had all these guys that I didn't know. The first group of guys that I played with, or I was with in 1979, great soccer players, but now they're all out of the fold. Uh, we had Rusty, we had Russell, we had all these people. We had players that had lots of grit. Um, and uh, when we started, you know, our year started off pretty well. We were uh, three and oh to start the year, and then things got, went downhill from there. And um, we ended up playing uh, a game in October. I think it was October 24th. It was up in Dur Durham, North Carolina against the national team, I think. It was. Oh, no, Duke had a bunch of national team players on, and that's who we were playing. <laughs> uh, so um, 
it was 40 degrees out. It was, uh, there was this thing called Longo points back then where coaches always preached about how we need to get our rating up so that we can get further down, uh, get, get up on the list so we can make the playoffs. And one of the things uh, that coach did was he set us up in such a way that we were basically living in our side of the field, but Duke, the Duke's goalie had his rain jacket on and I even think he had an umbrella. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think we crossed the field when we kicked the ball off, that's one time, and I think Hassan uh, crossed the field twice dribbling but didn't go very far and we had one shot. At the end of the first half, Duke had 38 shots and the score was zero to zero. So that was interesting. Uh, the, um, didn't score on us for 86 minutes. And I think whenever you talk to any of us that were on that team, that's one of those things that we all talk about. It was just one of those days. Coach had us in the right place. We were all doing what we were doing. I remember one guy who was standing behind the goal, Tom Kane, he was on the national team. He was their striker. He did what's called the bicycle kick. You probably see it with your face the wrong way. And you turn around and you flip the ball over your over your head, you kick at the goal, and I tipped it over, and the fellow behind the goal says, oh, this is going to be a fun game to watch. And that it was. Coach tells me that they had 26 corner kicks. That means that it hit off of one of us 26 times. It went out of bounds, and they got the ball to kick it back in. My Rusty, I think I hit in the face, stomach, his thigh. Uh, I had Tom Kane was, John Kane was there, uh, Randy Allmendinger. All these guys were black and blue because they were just throwing themselves in front of the ball and it was quite an experience. Uh, I read the article the other day and the national team guys was so worried that they were gonna end up going into overtime because they didn't wanna do that. Uh, but that was quite a, an interesting event. Uh, the fullbacks, as I said, they were strong. The, uh, the halfbacks were also in the goal box, so we pretty much packed it, meaning everybody was trying to stand on the way of the ball. And um, they were number one ranked in the country. And we did very well and love it. But we ended up 9-9-4 nine, nine, and four that year. And um, we got beat by Erskine three times. And there was never a game that we lost by more than one goal. So, um, but for just a couple of uh, possibilities we might have gotten further along. But what Winthrop really has done for me is it's the people here have been a family to me. In uh, May 9th of 1983, we were go I was going down to the beach with a friend of mine and we were in my Mustang and the car flipped over and I got thrown out of the uh, sunroof. When I bought that car, the car dealer told me, always wear your seatbelt when you have this uh, sunroof open because you don't want to go flying out. So um, we're driving, car flips over, guess what? I don't have my seatbelt on. I went flying out of the sunroof. I could tell you second by second. Okay, and when the car flipped over, hit my back, broke my spine. The car flipped and what happened? Caved in the passenger seat. If I had my seatbelt on, I'd have been gone, right? What a blessing. So um, I, they took him to the hospital. Dr. Webb, Ross Webb, was at my side that night. He came down from Rock Hill, and he was at my side. Okay. There were guys from the team who would come from Atlanta. There were people from the team who would come and spend time with me. Uh, Karen uh, Sullivan, Dilbeck, Karen Murray, stand up. Stand up, thank you. She would come and just sit with me. And I just asked her, would you just sit there? I didn't want, we didn't need to talk, just, and she would do it. And she was such a good friend. And she is such a wonderful person. And I just wanted you to know. Yeah. But school started 99 days after my accident, and that was my goal, I was gonna make it. My friends, the Herreras, the Onates, they came. They picked me up. They go do things with me. 
they brought me back in. My goal after my accident was to become who I would have been if I hadn't gotten the accident, and if I hadn't been hurt. And I think that this is an affirmation that I've gotten to where my goals are in life. I am doing what I would have been doing if I hadn't gotten hurt. As a matter of fact, I think it's made me a better man that this has happened to me. I'm living my life as I would if I was standing on my feet. The only difference is I cannot climb stairs. That's all right. I get around that. I just climb, um, climb them up on my rear end. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Winthrop is a family to me. Everybody here has been wonderful. Uh, Coach has been a good friend throughout my time. After leaving and while I was here, he even let me uh, coach the goalies. Uh, and it was fun to watch Doug Cooper and Brian Cripps and Scott Hodge and Sergeant Rock. Uh, they throw up after we get done with the workouts. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what goalies do. We like that. Uh, uh, so I also want to thank Alan Medlin uh, for being a mentor and a friend. Alan's here. He's making me the lawyer that I am. Justice Hearn taught me how to write. She taught me how to be a good lawyer. And I'm so appreciative of everything that she's done for me. And uh, you know, all my friends that were on the team, we are godparents to each other's children. We were in one another's weddings. We've, we call each other just to check in on one another. It's, it's my family. Uh, and then finally, Mia and I, we met here 20, uh, and uh, spent 20, uh, 25 good years, great years together, and have two beautiful daughters. And, um, you know, it's amazing. Uh, I was not the uh, summa cum laude type student. My <laughs> Mallory, our oldest daughter, spent three grueling semesters in pre-nursing programs. She started at Queens because I thought it'd be easier for getting in the nursing program. And she says, no, Dad, I'm going to go to USC where it's more competitive, and I'm going to get in it. And this girl took all science classes. I mean, doctors take the classes she was taking. And she got a 3.86 last semester doing that. <laughs> and let and last Sunday, she got the email, you've been accepted. So now she's in the nursing program. Congratulations, baby. <laughs> and Franny, our junior, she's in high school. She's a tennis player. And she works her tail off, too. And she has a 3.84 because she wants to get into better school than her sister's in. <laughs> so let's, let's see what happens. Me and I are very proud of them. Again, I'm truly honored to be uh, to have been nominated and now inducted into the, our university, it was Winthrop College, but our university's Hall of Fame. Thank you. <laughs>